Well, howdy, 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 nearly seniors, it isn't here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. Hope you smokes. Not that cold outside. I went out walkies with these two types of shirts, and then one of my long sleeve shirts as a jacket, and oh, I had to keep that unzipped, sleeves unzipped, unbuttoned, sleeves rolled up, my safety vest unzipped. Too warm. And oh, it's been warm this morning. Thumbs up for that. I wish I could say I slept well. Big long story about that coming up. And hey, front loading of videos. If you toss me a like, that would be very awesome. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be very cool. If you could leave me a comment, that would be double plus good. And I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. Hopefully, I've gotten through my executive dysfunction and am able to update this list today. Here is hope and definitely a thumbs up. But these people are literally beautiful and awesome, helping to keep me and my aging pet metabolizing. If you would like to help keep me and my aging pet metabolizing, I have links to the video disc in the video description to my patron as well as for a PayPal for possible donations an Amazon wish list link for things like pet food and there's a post office box that is going away at the end of the month so yay thumbs up for that oh boy yesterday great day <laughs> I actually did not that bad. It was, I mean, I had some falling asleep and then I did some stuff and I actually played more Tribes of Midgard and did stuff. So I didn't just stare blankly at things like I, I sometimes end up doing. Ugh, gotta love that. Finally, that night took the walkies up to Walmart. All the way there, had to buy a big thing of pet food, pretty heavy along with the other stuff that I bought, and that was fine. Got back here about nine o'clock. It took slightly less than two hours for the round trip, six hour walkies. And then at midnight, I had to empty out my aging pets uh, box. And I had to go out at 12.15 at 15 minutes after midnight on another walk to Safeway so I could get a box of litter to put in the replacement in the box. So I got back around one o'clock in the morning, pretty upset, <laughs> having been very physically active. It was 2.30 in the morning before I was able to finally get wound down from the physical activity to be tired and sleepy enough that I could sleep. And then, 5.30 in the morning, up because my gut is killing me. So, yeah, I got about three hours of sleep. I'm exhausted. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to do things today, but I have no clues. Oh, here is trying and hoping. Yay! Hopefully, you're doing better sleep-wise than I am. <laughs> uh, here is hoping. There are a couple silly things that I want to talk about. Some of them silly, some of them not so silly. I do not like J.K. Rowling. I, her work has been thoroughly ruined for me personally going forward. But as there's science fiction writer on Facebook, whom I follow and occasionally talk with, he's about my age. His wife has semi-recently passed away. They were married uh, longer than I and my wife were, but that's just because my wife died before his wife did, and then his wife died. And she was a big Harry Potter fan, just as my wife was. And so, yeah, I... They're separating the art from the artist, and as much as I don't like the books and the movies because of J.K. Rowling anymore, it's also, as Adam Troy Castro, the person on Facebook, says, the love for my of Harry Potter is tied in with the love for my wife. My wife died before any of this stuff about J.K. Rowling came out. She loved the books. She loved the movies. Because of that, I can't just turn around and just decide to hate these things because it's tied in with my wife so much. 
I have to separate the art from the artist in that fashion because I can't get around the fact that it's wrapped up with my wife and all that just as his memories and such are. He thoroughly disassociates himself from J.K. Rowling, but just like with the artist Bill Cosby, who has been, you know, we found out he is a vile, vile person. Just like him, I have such fond memories of when I was even in kindergarten listening to Bill Cosby comedy records. And all through my growing up, Bill Cosby was a good person. The fact that now that later on we find out he's not, and was in fact vile his entire life, doesn't take away the fact that as a kid I laughed at his stuff. And I liked his stuff a lot. I can't retroactively go through and, and change that. I can dislike him and everything he does, but that's all tied in with, with everything. So you're going to find that happening as you get older. Yay. And I talked about yesterday how I was having troubles periodically where if I cough too hard from cannabis inhaling smoke, I will occasionally have to fight not to power puke as I'm coughing. One of the things that makes me laugh is when you do like a, a spoonerism is when you take the first word of two sentences and then you, you swap them and then it makes a goofy sentence out of that. But I like things where you can just take it, individual words, not just the first one, and swap them around and such. And so, last when I was thinking about the whole power puking thing prior to actually talking about it in vlogging, one thing that made me laugh is I had goofily mixed up the phrasing of the words, and so instead of, I was coughing so hard I was almost puking, I kept laughing and laughing because it came out as, I was puking so hard I almost started coughing. <laughs> that would be some pretty heavy duty puking indeed. <coughs> okay. Now, about all I have left is, I can't remember if I talked about this, is Jesse Koskinen has talked about how poorly Minecraft runs on the Switch. Now, there are two reasons that Minecraft runs so poorly on my system right now. One is my system is old, but Minecraft used to run almost like butter before all the new changes that they've made. Now it runs horrifically, but it used to run well. So the new changes that they've made, partially just unoptimized and partly uh, the old hardware. Now I'm going to hopefully be getting the motherboard and the CPU and all that put on in. I'm going to get that done hopefully soon. I got to fight through the executive dysfunction, but I need to blow the dust out of my computer case here. The only thing I'm even semi-worried about is the case is old. The power supply is old. Everything in that, except for a few cables and such, is old. So, joy? Hopefully everything is going to fit and fit well. The new motherboard is like this big. I mean, it's not really. This is in relative terms. It's about this big and my old motherboard's like this. So it's going to be different fitting it in there. Hopefully there's screws in there. Well, places for the screws to go. I messed that phrase up. <laughs> All that I have left that I want to talk about now in looking at my list is I've been thinking a lot about the character of Nathaniel Hunter, the character who is the insurance salesman in the cryptid world, whom is a human as an urban cryptid, they are human-human. They like humans. Humans do well around them. They are not one of those that is unable to be seen, like most cryptids are, because of the type of cryptid they are. People can interact with them without being a victim, and they can interact with standard human beings. They 
Nathaniel Hunter has worked in an insurance corporation, insert large name, insert name of large insurance corporation here, along with a lot of the other cryptid networks inside the corporation. But they are well liked by their co-workers and well liked by their superiors and well liked by the people that they interact with partially because of the type of cryptid they are, people like Nathaniel Hunter. The thing is, Nathaniel Hunter is honestly also a nice person. They enjoy people. They like people. They don't like to hurt people. In fact, that's what prompts this whole thing, because Nathaniel Hunter can see the pain inside of some people's eyes. Well, not in their eyes, behind their eyes. They're hiding this pain, this trauma, this thing that has robbed their lives, that is haunting them. <clears throat> it is these people he wants to help. When he sees them, he just wants to hug them and assure them that everything is going to be okay. When he and his friend and boss, Planko, cryptid names are fun, aren't they? come up with this whole thing and it's Nathaniel Hunter that comes up with the actual idea but his friend and boss loves the thing and pitches it upward. Nathaniel Hunter kind of looks like the stereotypical used car salesman from popular media. He's a Always a little bit more sweaty than everybody else. He's got thinning, balding, comb over hair. He's got, he's fat. He's got a fat old belly. He wears one of those checkered yellow and brown shirts. He, he just looks disheveled all the time. But he is so personable and so likable. Within minutes, you forget what he looks like because he's just a nice guy. When you see him across the room, you don't think, oh, there's that fat guy. Hey, Nate. You think, oh, there's that guy I like. Hey, Nate. That, his physical appearance doesn't mean a thing because he's just such a nice guy. And he is. He really wants to help. And so, when he does start up his insurance biz, because the big boys in the corporations aren't too sure about the whole idea, but they think it's going to be okay, they're given the green light, but he's not given an office. This is why he lives in an alley, and he has an abandoned human storefront that he uses. And because he is a cryptid, and there's dark cryptids around, human beings don't use this, thus, thus it is abandoned. So he sets up shop in there. He buys his own filing cabinets and storage bins to put things into. He works with the people in the insurance corporation to get the forms and set up the networks properly. He gets his laptop and he starts his business. He's a personable person. Everybody likes him. Businesses don't think they're going to get much. Planko thinks there's going to be more, but even that, he's only expecting maybe 30 policies sold in a year. But no. Nathaniel, again, is one of those that where this things worked out right. He is trying to appeal to that small little percentage of human beings with that trauma, that trauma and pain he can see behind their eyes. He wants to help them. These are whom he is trying to attract. It works out with the type of cryptid that he is and what he is doing. This is the type of clientele that he does attract. If you walk down the street and you look over and you see him in this little abandoned place where he is trying to sell stuff, he's got a little sign up on the outside of it. You'd look at that and if you weren't of that small percentage, you'd go, oh, eh, another business. Well, I hope they do okay. And you just keep going and then you rapidly forget about it. But if you're of that small subset, you look at that and then you go, wait a minute, wait a minute, really? And then you head over there to talk to Nathaniel. 
and Nathaniel Hunter does his best. And again, he's very personable and does not pull any punches. He lets you know what is going to happen. That to free you from your past, to free you from your future, you cannot feel pain, sheer <laughs> pain, guilt, or shame if you've been digested. And he goes out on his own because the corporation penny pinching at the weirdest times will not shell out to give him pain away and because he believes in what he's doing so thoroughly he spends capital out of his own pocket to get pain away for each and every one of his policy holders and pain away is a cryptid analgesic when you take it within 15 minutes as a human being you feel no pain you feel everything else, but the worst you will feel from pain is a mild pressure that feels vaguely pleasurable. And that could be after someone bites off half of your hand. So he makes sure that all of his policyholders get the pain away. A lot of people end up getting it just as a free sample because you have to put in your insurance application and not everybody gets accepted. Not everybody can be sold a policy. And for those people, Nathaniel feels bad, but if you can't, if you can't afford the policy, you need to get the, the capital and try coming back. He feels bad for these people, but... So eventually, because he gets 60 clients, well, 70 clients in less than 60 days, the insert name of large insurance corporation here actually listens to him finally, especially since he's been gaining 30 pounds, and since it's hard to make a cryptid gain weight, He's very concerned because he's already, he does not get down on his hands and knees to lick the blood up off the floor because he already doesn't have a girlish figure. And then after he's filled himself, if you know, he's filled his belly with a policy holder, he really doesn't want to get down on his hands and knees. So when they finally do open up an actual office for him, which they do. They design it up to his standards with a nice tiled floor with grates where just after he's eaten a policy holder, he just gets out the hose and washes everything that remains uh, down into the, in the, the sluices and away. I figure some of the policy holders, well, people that want policies, I was going to say policy holders and then I didn't say it, but people who want policies, I imagine that there would be a scene like you're walking up and there's Nathaniel hosing out the inside of his abandoned shop front where he's working because again he doesn't get down on his hands and knees so every couple days he's got to just hose out all the detritus that falls to the ground after he eats someone. And so someone will come up and just stand there waiting while he's busy, you know, sluicing all the blood out and onto the street and into the sewers, along with, you know, a rope of intestine, a hand, chunks of other bits of human detritus, and it's all just down into the sewer and gone. So they just wait, and when he's done, he's like, shakes their hand, greets them, and brings them on in. And does that really freak him out that he's washing out the human detritus? Well, you're already attracted to the place. That sort of thing is a, you're not gonna be bothered when you see it. You're kind of expecting it already mentally. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm gonna go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language well, with my ADHD, oh joy. And there's never many comments anymore, but anything more than zero is double plus good. Thumbs up and thank you. We have Jesse Koskinen, thumbs up and thank you. I'm trying to do better with my thumbnails. Hopefully I'm doing well. We have Chris, thumbs up. Thank you very, very much. It is appreciated. 
J A double Y. Oh, definitely watch the Kung Fu Panda movies again. They are bloody amazing. As well as Shane Roth. Thumbs up. They are absolutely astonishing. And Flora Mew, greatly appreciate it. And hey, thank you for the info. That's kind of cool. 77 Arcturus, thumbs up. Thank you. And always good to see you. Hopefully, I will continue to see you for a very long time. We have Blue Toad. Oh, well, who's hopefully uh, done vomiting now. Hokey smokes. And then we have, a, well, there is a Juan Ramito, I think. Yeah, okay. And there we go. Uh, 13 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Greatly appreciate you. Get me out of my head, into the world, and dealing with real people. Thumbs up and thank you. Well, hey, uh, it's a Monday, and I am exhausted. I'm going to try and do what I can do, but with only three hours of sleep or less, I do not know how well I'm going to be functioning today. I'm going to try and record some solo RPG stuff, whether it be Treasure Awaits or something else, we shall see. But, oh boy, it all depends on how well the old brain is working. So, of course, no matter where you are, if people are getting sick, take appropriate precautions wherever you are. If people are getting hurt, take appropriate precautions wherever you are. And if you're out walking and you hear the mournful howl of the bus horn, the bus with your name on it, I hope you made a will. Because, oh boy, you're going to die when that bus hits you. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is indeed a very good thing.